So this is one of the projects. Uh, and the other ones are related to, not necessarily to the device, but also to uh, re restoring uh, uh, self-tolerance or improving, uh, for example, improving the, uh, reducing the, 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 the progression of, uh, of uh, autoimmunity or even halting uh, the progression of autoimmunity. Uh, what, um, what kind of <clears throat> what kind of approaches are, are is is the DRI looking at to halt the or stop the autoimmune response? We, we have a, uh, we are looking at uh, mo uh, immunomodulatory agents. Like uh, uh, we're always uh, looking at uh, agents that have been shown some sort of uh, efficacy in other systems, which are already uh, at the preclinical or clinical level. But also we are looking at the pipeline of uh, new molecules that are uh, uh, potentially uh, transferable to the, to the clinical setting in, in relatively short term. Uh, virtually, I would say 99% of what is done at the DRI is uh, translational, meaning that uh, the, the, whenever we think a project has to have an out, outlet into a clinical application, never uh to basic uh, uh you need the basics to understand the efficacy to understand the safety and to understand how something works uh, so that you can uh, maximize the effect but uh, everything that we do is really with that perspective in, in our in our mind so right now we are looking at uh, uh, for example there are uh, physical means of uh, uh changing uh, uh, the inflammatory response in a, in a human being and uh, one of those is uh, hyperbaric oxygen. It looks like uh, alchemy and uh, not really scientific, but actually there is a body of literature showing that uh, you can, uh, by, by uh, undergoing a hyperbaric oxygen treatment, you can change um, uh, and reduce inflammation in a, in a human being. And there are, the, mechanism, uh, the mechanisms are not yet fully understood, so there is a lot of uh, uh, new knowledge that has to come from uh, thorough scientific approach but uh, if we understand what what how this is uh, happening we can define drugs that can bypass even the physical uh, needs of uh, putting a person in an hyperbaric chamber and then uh, you can directly go to the to the target and right now we have data showing that if we take uh, non obese diabetic mice not mice and we put them in the hyperbaric chamber before they develop diabetes we are preventing uh, the onset of diabetes in a majority of them and uh, delaying uh, the onset in, in the ones that will, will develop diabetes. That's really interesting. Yeah. That is very interesting because it's a relatively uh, safe, I mean, it's definitely safe unless you smoke a cigar while you're uh, undergoing the, the <laughs> antibody oxygen. It's a safe procedure and uh, it's, it's well tolerated, so it's not like injecting something uh, into mm. a patient which can uh, create problems. Now. Prevention of diabetes in NOD mice has been uh, done with uh, anything and the contrary, so we are very conscious of that, but we are doing a very uh, good uh, mechanistic analysis to understand what is going on there. We also took a model of accelerated diabetes, in which you basically uh, inject the animals with a drug that is cyclo uh, uh, cyclophosphamide, and this basically synchronizes all the animals and makes them accelerates the onset of autoimmune diabetes and uh, one of the putative mechanism of this uh, drug is that it's uh, depleting regulatory uh, cells cells that are important in regulating immune cells and that is basically unleashing uh, the autoimmune process because those are animals that are prone to develop diabetes and on demise again well also there we are seeing that there is a protection and a prevention of uh, autoimmune diabetes uh, in, a, in comparable numbers uh, to the spontaneous diabetes. So this is really seems something real. Uh, and, uh, and right now we are uh, analyzing uh, the data and, uh, and starting to uh, evaluate w which are the me mechanisms underlying this, uh, this phenomenon. This could be uh, a very important approach for uh, patients at onset, but could be also an approach as an as a, um, uh, adjuvant therapy with uh, uh, other interventions, it could be uh, immune interventions, and that's, that's what we are seeing as a, a possible uh, application for, uh, for, for, for the future years, and will be easily implementable because it's already something that is, has been used for, what, 40 years, and, uh, and there is plenty of data on, on the safety. Now we need the data on the mechanism underlying the immunoprotective effects. And, uh, and there are other uh, promising data that, that I'm not ready to disclose them, but uh, I, I, I want to give you some uh, hope that there is something else that is going on there that could be very exciting uh, and synergizing with the immunomodulation. 
but I don't I don't I don't want to disclose it until we have all uh, uh, nailed down uh, and understood. And uh, what else I can tell you? Uh, in a nutshell, uh, the two areas are, are the ones that uh, we're looking. Uh, adjuvant cells are very important, cells that can modulate immunity. So we're looking at the cellular therapies to modulate immunity. Now it seems a complex thing, and it is very complex. But uh, basically, we're trying to identify cells that can regulate in, in immunity, and those that could be T lymphocytes that are known to have that role. And uh, how can we push them uh, to become more active in a, at the onset of autoimmunity or uh, after transplantation, so that we can achieve uh, tolerance? This is still uh, unknown. So there are some reagents that can be used to um, expand in vitro. T regulatory cells, and this is uh, uh, part of the studies that are done here at the DRI to have uh, to take the cells either from the same patient or from a, a, an elevated donor, expand them in vitro. So those will be basically tolerogenic cells that you have uh, in, uh, in large amounts, and then uh, at the time of uh, intervention, you just inject them into the patient. This is still uh, uh, theoretical, although in, uh, in animal models it has been shown that uh, this is a, a viable option. You can uh, reduce graft versus host disease, and this has been done also in, 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 clinical, uh, uh, in the clinical setting. In mice, you can prevent rejection, you can uh, reduce the, the incidence of uh, autoimmunity, etc. So the, the scientific uh, rationale is there. Uh, what is, is missing is the link to the, to the clinical setting, and we're, we're working on that. And not, not much uh, my team, my team is more of a supportive role, but uh, there is a, a group of uh, human immunologists uh, who are really uh, working hard on, uh, on T-regulatory cells. There are mesenchymal cells, which are uh, very important cells in uh, uh, contributing to tissue repair, but they are, have also the property of modulating immunity. So we are looking also at uh, using those cells to, to, you know, when you have those uh, ambivalent cells, you're trying to use as much as you can both their good uh, properties, and, uh, and, and those are, uh, are there. there are, those are studies that we are doing in small animals and in non-human primates mm -hmm. already. The, the studies with the devices and uh, with the uh, scaffolds, uh, pro you probably will be meeting uh, Dr. Stabler, if yeah. she's okay. Uh, she will be ta ta talking to you about other approaches that we are also testing both in animal, small animal models and in, uh, in non-human primates. This is really all translational, uh, uh, trans translationally oriented. And I saw Pierre, otherwise uh, Gary will kill me. But, uh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm it's holding slow you. death. It's not, it won't be painful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs>